Hello? Testing, testing. There we go. <clears throat> now you're in my ears. <laughs> well, Yeti does a pretty good job because I couldn't hear myself coming back through the mic, so. Oh, nice. I do have the gain turned down to zero. That's the only way to use it. Gain at zero and your mouth an inch from the microphone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't pick up my kids because they're both in the house today. I think it'll be all right. We've 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 done podcasts with kids running around before without much of an issue. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm uh, editing, I, you know, I hear them every now and then, but it's not like uh, it's throughout the whole thing. I've got this one video on YouTube, which uh, I just recorded it super casually. It was how to remove Microsoft automatic update from a Mac. Uh, okay. A long time ago, 2017. Uh-huh. But uh, I had a, a baby in my lap when I did it and they're just cooing and gurgling and I didn't think of anything at the time. Like it. I wasn't that invested in making this video. It was like one cut, quick upload to YouTube. Uh-huh. It's become like one of the biggest videos on my channel, and I get complaints all the time about the baby in the background. People still complain about that. Mm-hmm. Wow. All the time. <laughs> one of the comments is like, your life sounds like a living hell or something like that. Oh, that's terrible, because you have a baby? I know. <laughs> <laughs> The baby in the lap. Actually, there's also a saxophone playing in the background. <laughs> so, <laughs> but like good saxophone, not bad saxophone. Who was playing? My brother. Oh, okay, cool. I've been thinking about picking up a saxophone recently. Oh, really? I, uh, I've always been a, a brass instrument player. And uh-huh. uh, I spent probably about a decade, mainly playing trumpet. I played around with baritone and, and trombone and stuff, but uh, mostly trumpet in like marching bands and concert bands and jazz bands. And I did that. Uh, well, I started taking lessons in like the second grade and I played all the way through jazz band for the first like year of college. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I put it down and I, I haven't really picked up, picked up my trumpet for about a decade now. And and uh, I can't play it anymore. That's the problem. Yeah, you should keep those skills warm. Yeah. You it, should uh, just pick it up, you know, at least once a week. Just to Right. I mean, I know keep it going. everything I need to do is just like the muscles in my mouth are gone. So, mm. but, uh-huh. but I have played around with reed instruments, um, I guess woodwinds, and uh, the, the, the tight muscle control in your lips isn't needed quite as much. So I was thinking, maybe I should just pick up a saxophone and play that instead. Yeah, there are probably different muscles that you need for it, though. Like, or I think it was like you need heaps and heaps of air for oh, yeah. a saxophone. Yeah. You need to have like the most flexy cheeks in the world. <laughs> to, uh, get that, hold all that air in your mouth and then get it out. Yeah. So, what about you? Have you played any instruments? Uh, I tried picking up a few over the years, but I was never particularly good at it. I much prefer just listening to music. Yeah. I did uh, guitar lessons for a little while. Uh, I played the drum kit for a little while, and I took singing lessons for a little while. But yeah, not particularly adept at it. My brother uh, stole all the musical prowess (laughs) from me. (laughs) He's quite good. He did it all through uni. Uh, He did saxophone. Awesome. I can't remember what level he got up to, but he was quite good and my brother-in-law is like one of the top jazz pianists in the state so i mean there's no competing wow lots of competition in the family yeah yep he's winning all sorts of awards uh state awards for jazz piano wow that's awesome what's his name harry mitchell harry mitchell harry mitchell is an american politician is he (laughs) (laughs) I, re- I really like listening to jazz piano. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Found some YouTube videos. Uh, Keith, Je- oh, yeah. Keith Jarrett is one of my favorite artists. Mm-hmm. Because when I'm... I like having music going when I'm working, but I can't listen to anything that has uh, words or I get distracted. So jazz piano is always nice background music to have on. Mm, okay. Yep. So I'll have, to, I'll have to check him out. Maybe he'll be my new background music. You should do, yeah. Uh, his newest album is on Apple Music. Uh, oh, really? Just find it for you. Uh, so I just launched music, 
and it's empty. Like, it, it has no idea I've ever launched it. <laughs> the music app. <laughs> Seriously, my library is empty. So I can't... Wait, let me just go to my phone. I can tell you what it is. Album's called... Actually, the last one was like a covers album. Uh, the music of Paul Simon. I am like the rain. And actually, one of the songs off this, this album made it onto one of the main Apple Music playlists last week. Really? One of the playlists that rotate songs every 24 hours, so it's got a very high turnover. Uh, but yeah, I was actually just browsing the playlist and then I saw one of his songs on it, which is... Man, that's exciting. Very cool. Yeah, I was excited. I told him he wasn't quite as excited. He was like, great, that'll be $11. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've heard the music industry is like pretty notorious for pretty much taking all the money and artists getting nothing. Yeah. Yep. Huh. I will subs- Does he have a Apple Music like artist page I can follow? I don't think so because uh let me just have a look. Because not all of his previous albums have been on there. If any actually. No, I want to search his name and just one of the co... Oh, wait. Artists? Oh, he does. And there are... Oh, there are only two albums on there. Do you want me to share it with you, or have you already found it? If if one of his albums is from 2019 called Harry Mitchell, then I think I found him. Um, <laughs> Not on his artist page, but... It's like a a white album. It's like maybe a... It's a black and white image of him. Oh, yeah, that is him. Okay. I wonder why that doesn't appear on his artist page. Oh, no, that looks like his actual artist page because it's actually got a profile photo as well. Yeah. Yeah, his other two albums don't appear there. Okay. I'll have to let him know about that. I hear Apple has him like split into two different artists. Mm. What a surprise. <laughs> Classic Apple. Classic. Classic Apple music. That's actually uh, one of the... Uh, topics kind of that we're talking about today do you want to get into that one yeah we can good morning good morning hot off the press basically uh, apple announces apple music radio uh, and of course the actual topic is uh, full of complaints on reddit uh, about exactly how apple music works <laughs> specifically about how it you can download an album from Apple Music and then a couple of weeks later, it'll be split into like 15 albums. Right. <laughs> it's not quite that bad. But Apple has announced Apple Music Radio, which is, uh, well, it's partially rebranding and partially something new. So Beats 1 is now Apple Music 1, which is not quite as rolly off the tonguey as Beats 1, but it's uh, part of their effort, I guess, to get rid of Beats as a brand by the same uh, by the sound of it. Yep. Uh, but alongside that, there are two new music stations, Apple Music Hits and Apple Music Country. Uh, Apple Music Hits, I found this a little bit unusual, but maybe I'm just reading it wrong. It's, uh, according to Apple, is Apple's words from the press release, celebrating everyone's favorite songs from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Now, does that mean that everything after 2010 is not going to be on there, or are they just grouping this millennium uh, as the 2000s, what do you reckon? I mean, that's that's been a, a critique of mine of of radio stations in general for the better part of a decade now. Because I, I think even still today, I hear radio stations advertising, they play hits from the 80s, 90s, and today. It's like, today is two decades. What are we doing grouping these two decades together? Um, mm. so, so I w- it's just radio talk. Yeah. I'm sure that it's it's up to the present day, though. But, yeah, I think it's just because we don't have a word for the first decade of 2000s. No one calls it the knots or noughties or whatever. You um, could say 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010s. <laughs> yeah, I can see why they didn't. Right. So, but, yeah, we're grouping. I mean, that's that's the thing. My entire life growing up, it's been radio stations play 80s 90s and today so for two decades i've heard that and and today has just grown to mean more and more over my lifetime i look forward to the time when we can say the 20s 
because then people, well, I mean, we're going to be able to like, it's going to sound like we're talking about the 1920s, but we're going to be talking about modern history and then we're going to have to clarify. That's going to be fun. <laughs> I mean, I think everyone will know what we're talking about when we, when we talk about the decade that started with, well, I'll say a global pandemic and your country being on fire and... But I don't think... The 1920s thi- weren't that better, were they? Yeah, I, mean, I was going to say, had... I think they are pretty bad too. <laughs> the Great Depression? That was 20s? Yeah, I think that was late teens into the 20s. Oh, I was going to say 1928. Could be wrong. Uh Oh, no, 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 Great you're right. Great Depression. 1929. Mostly during the 19... 19- started in 1929, yeah. When was the Spanish flu, though? That was World War One. so we're talking in the, the teens. 1918, okay, yeah. So the 20s might actually uh, have been a good decade. All I picture is silent pictures of people with crazy headdresses dancing, like with their hands by their side. That's what <laughs> right. In yeah. The 20s. Okay. It was the one nice decade between between the Spanish flu and World War One and World War Two. <laughs> <laughs> and the Depression. Don't forget the Great Depression. Right. The Great Depression. Yeah. Yeah. We could well be heading into another Great Depression. Oh, yeah. Especially... Just to bring the whole tone of everything down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how the whole world's doing, but I know definitely, like, the economy in my country has been falling apart because of this virus. I'm sure it's maybe not as bad, but still having problems elsewhere as well. Yeah, it's not great worldwide. I think the biggest effects are yet to be seen. Yeah. But... um Back to, back to Apple Music <laughs> Radio. Have you Are ever you listened listener? to Beats 1? Oh, we just asked each other the same question. Beats 1. No. No. <laughs> I was... I was. <laughs> did I ever? No, I can answer. Did I ever? Yes, I did ever because I tried. I was really excited when it came out because I thought the concept was really good. It had some good hosts. Right. Uh, even a Kiwi guy. So it didn't... It wasn't like too American. <laughs> sounds probably sounds weird to you but uh it is something you have to do in other countries because so much comes out of america that sometimes you just have to um find stuff that's not too so american right and uh because of uh, zane low from new zealand yeah zane low um yeah pretty cool and what i found was that i guess the style was it was too varied right and also the uh, the styles that they did focus on weren't really to my taste. Like every time I, like I could turn it on at like 8 a.m. in the morning and there'll just be like pumping dance music or R&B. Right. And I was just like, mm, it's not what I feel like at 8 a.m. in the morning. I don't, I don't even know enough about Beats 1 to say if like they always had like a dance show at 8 a.m. in the morning for my time zone just because of the time it was i guess 8 a.m here is 8 p.m and right. probably wherever. that's the problem with a worldwide radio used. right so that's right but that's something that you, they could easily have foreseen unless they're just like well the market for this is north america so let's just like focus on that time zone right um yeah i i gave it a shot a handful of times when it first came out a few years ago but i had a similar experience where every time i tuned in they weren't playing anything I was interested in, and I eventually just stopped going back to it. Yeah, exactly. So what do you think about Apple Music Hits then? Even if you might be missing out on an entire decade. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think the idea is good. I've definitely used the internet radio in the Apple Music app before to play like 80s radio or whatever. So I'm not sure exactly how this will be different than the pre-existing pop radio stations you can get, except it's actually produced and handled by Apple now. Um, but I think it's a solid idea. Well, I'm thinking the difference is going to be it's not just a playlist. It's uh, going to have presenters and various shows and that sort of thing on it. Because previously, a lot of things were called radio in quotes, and they were just merely a stream of a list of songs. Uh, that's true, but you can get real radio in the music app as well. Oh, yeah, like local radio, yeah. Right, I use that a lot. Hmm. But I guess I've never paid enough attention to differentiate between what 
what is just playlists and what is actually like lively live hosted stuff i think in general when it's not my local talk radio that i listen to uh i'd probably prefer more of just a playlist experience than my music being interrupted by a personality you know every other song or something it would be hard to have a personality that suited the entire planet wouldn't it right (laughs) because normally they're talking about hyper local uh topics as well right like uh this freeway is slow because of an accident that sort of nonsense Mm -hmm. so it might not be something that i spend much time listening to but what do you think i'm definitely willing to give it a go though yeah i'll try it out what do you think about this apparent moving away from the beats brand you think they're gonna be phasing it out entirely i don't know what else have they done to phase it out well i think this is the first like real sign where they've replaced the Beats brand with something else. But there are rumors that they're working on studio headphones that are going to be under the AirPods brand. So I assume that's a replacement for the Beats headphones. Currently in the like in-ear sort of lineup, they do have parallel products though. Right. The AirPods have, I can't even remember. I don't know much about the Beats brand at all really. But uh, I mean, it's, it's very possible that they're going to have uh, just Beats side by side with uh, Apple Studio headphones, whatever they're called, head pods. <laughs> I think just AirPod Studio. All right, fine, AirPod Studio. It sounds way better than head pods. Head pods <laughs> doesn't really make any sense, actually. I can't. Yeah, I can't think of a better one. <laughs> so, I don't know. I I don't think the beats brand carries the weight it did what almost 10 years ago when apple bought it i know at the time it was really popular and it seemed like everyone was wearing beats headphones but now everyone wears airpods and i don't i don't think beats are as popular anymore well what was the original reason for them buying beats was it to get some of the people or was it for the uh, yeah the streaming service i think it has to have been just to have a, a jumping off point for their streaming service so they didn't have to start from nothing and work up to where they are. Because they sure haven't done much with the the actual hardware. And and Dr. Dre, I don't think, had anything to do with, with Beats more than like a couple months after Apple bought it. Yeah, so the whole popularity of them has just slowly waned over the decade, whatever it's been. Right. And uh, AirPods have taken over as the hot new thing. So what's the point in having Beats around, except that someone spent a billion dollars on it and they don't want to see that (laughs) (laughs) go down the drain. Although if all that takes what uh, what they started Apple Music with, then it probably hasn't gone down the drain at all. I said at the time that, that the purchase of Beats was to, man, I don't even know how to phrase this, keep... For the past two decades, the headphones that have been stylish to have on have always been Apple-owned ones. From 2001, when the iPod came out, everyone had the white earbuds with the cord hanging down, even to the point where people with knockoff MP3 players would buy the white earbuds so they looked like they had iPods. And then that was the iconic headphones to wear until Beats came out, and then suddenly everyone was wearing Beats, which Apple then bought. And those stayed the popular headphones to wear until AirPods came out. And now it's cool to have AirPods in. And so I think it's some kind of like brand image thing that they've always been trying to achieve. It's a status symbol to own one of their products. They really need to watch out for the Samsung Beans. (laughs) The Samsung Buds Live. (laughs) Because some people might like the look of having kidney beans in their ears. Right. Even down to the color. Yeah, I think that's the future of the market. Apple's really going to have to release like some AirPod beans or something. Mm. What do you really think of the beans? You know, I've I've actually heard positive reviews from the few videos I've seen talking about them. But they sure do make me laugh every time I see them. Have you seen some in the wild? Oh, you're just talking about... Just in, in photos and on videos. They don't look terrible in ear, but just loose on their on their own. They're very funny. I think in ear they look a little bit like 
uh, you know, like custom molded earplugs right. that people wear on work sites. I don't think they look that great. Yeah, they're cer- they're certainly not stylish. No, not really. My my thought was it kind of looks like a hearing aid. That's it. Yeah, it looks like a hearing aid. Yeah. So. They're about as stylish as those. Is it Microsoft's or Google's where it looks like there's a huge dinner plate sticking out of your ear? Uh, they both kind of had that design, but Microsoft's is bigger. So I think that's what you're thinking of. Mm. You know how some people stretch their ears and have like a huge plate in their earlobe? Oh, like a gauge? It looks like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those are very silly as well. Although, everyone made fun of the shape of, of AirPods as well. So, it's not like there's any good way to do in-ear headphones. That was fairly short-lived, though, I think. They just looked weird because they looked exactly like regular headphones without the cable. Because they do. They don't look too dissimilar from that. Right. a slightly longer stem and thicker stem. So, people just got used to them and now no one mm. cares. And the AirPods Pro look pretty good especially with a shorter stem airpods pro yeah yep they do look pretty good my uncle bought some airpods pro oh okay uh, and uh they they weren't staying in his ear very well so he bought like ear hooks for them as well (laughs) okay (laughs) so but i said to him like you know these aren't gonna fit in the case when you've got ear hooks attached to them right Mm -hmm. (laughs) mm-hmm yeah Anyway, that was a stupid story. You should have uh, recommended the Power Beats to him. It's all the same technology of AirPods Pro, but they have the built-in mm. hooks. Yeah, he's a big Apple fan, so even though Beats is the same company, I'm not sure he would have gone for it. Mm. Okay. So as long as it has like the W1 chip in it, I'd be happy. Mm. Yeah. So, but maybe I'll see if I can nab the AirPods Pro off him next time I'm there. All right. Yeah, you'll have to give me a review. I'm really anxious to see how the spatial audio stuff works in iOS 14. Is that not available yet? It's not available yet? Is it not? Well, I don't have AirPods Pro, so... Ah, right. For some reason, I always think you do. I don't know why, where I got that into my head. <laughs> it's just because you buy most Apple stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't use my headphones enough to justify upgrading my standard AirPods. Yeah. Especially now that I don't leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> is that still the state of uh, your state? No leaving the house? Or is it just because of your change in working arrangements? Uh, probably a bit of both. But yeah, most of the state is still is still shut, shut down. Um, like my office isn't even considering reopening until next year. Oh, wow. But either, either way, it wouldn't make a difference because I did transition to fully remote work. So, Mm -hmm. but yeah, there's mandatory mask wearing in most businesses if you go anywhere and really don't want to go anywhere uh, with uh, the county I'm in has the highest infection rate of any county in the state. So, oh, really? Yeah. Which our numbers are a little uh, inflated because we have the state prisons in our county and, and unfortunately it spread quite a bit within the prisons. And so a lot of those numbers are inmates that, you know, can't really distance. They also shouldn't really be spreading it outside of the prisons. Right. I think we've had one prison guard die from it. Oh, damn. But, uh, yeah. It's tough. Where to go from there? <laughs> we could talk about... Actually, I had a complaint that I wanted to, to bring up. And I, I put a YouTube Ooh. video in the show notes. Um, oh, so yeah, you're actually going to make a complaint about this video. I thought you were going to put it in there because you enjoyed it so much. No, I'm I'm actually so very mad about it. Oh. <laughs> From Dave 2D. Yeah. Did you watch this video? I watched it. Okay. I put it in the show notes. I did my homework. Oh, okay. Um, so it's his, his 2020 iMac uh, review. Which uh, I think I think the message in his review is great. I don't have a problem with his review at all. I have a problem with the fact that he showed off the development kit in his video. He had it sit- oh, sitting on the box, and he picked it up, and he p- turned it around, and he showed everyone everything about it in clear violation of Apple's confidential- confidentiality policy that I had to agree to to get mine. Um, I don't know if it's his so or not. Really sh- 
merely showing it on the video was a violation. Let me let me read this to you. I have it printed out. Section 2.3 of the Quick Start program. The developer transition kit is considered Apple's confidential information under your developer agreement. You agree not to publicly write about or review the developer transition kit or to share or display it to anyone other than your authorized developers without Apple's prior written approval. Oh, okay. That's very explicit that it should not be on YouTube videos. Right. I don't even know if it's his. He might have borrowed it from someone just to have in his video. Because I I know in the video he talked about he tried to make an app once, but I don't think he actively does any kind of development. Um, but yeah, I'm very mad because he can get away with this. And I would love to put on my channel just like a video of unboxing the development kit, which wouldn't show any more of the development kit than what he showed off in his video. But I risk losing my developer account doing that. Your video would be about the developer, the DTK. His video wasn't about it. It was just kind of there and he picked it up and waved it around a little bit. I suppose. What if you made a video about something else and then just as you were talking, you unboxed it? Let, let, me, it around. <laughs> let me read you section 2.2, section D of the agreement. Have you really printed it out or are you reading a PDF? No, I've got it printed out. It's right here. You hear the papers? That's awesome. 2.2 section D about uh, non-permitted uses. Uh, you, let's see. You agree that neither you nor your authorized developers will display, demonstrate, video, photograph, make any drawings or renderings of, or take any images or measurements of, or run any benchmark tests on the developer kit. So it specifically says you can't display, video, or photograph it, or even draw a picture of it. Hmm. How do you think he got away with it? I don't know. I Like I said, I think it's not his. He doesn't have an account that could be terminated. Well, yeah. So, I mean, someone violated the the agreement somewhere, but... It, I mean, it could be a random viewer who's like, hey, I have the kit. Do you want to put it in one of your videos? And he's like, yeah, that'd be a great prop. <laughs> and How would Apple even identify who it is? There'd be no way unless, you know, like his video had showed the serial number or something. Maybe they could trace it back to who they sent that to. How would I, Apple identify if you put a video, who, which developer account yours was? Well, I mean, I'd have to start like an anonymous YouTube channel, right? Um, it's pretty obvious who I am. So if they if they cared and looked up who's David Freeman, oh, that's I can, they could figure it out. I think they might have a few <laughs> David Freemans. Okay, <laughs> it's not worth the risk though because my I don't have like a separate developer account from my personal account, so I risk losing access to like all of my personal Apple stuff if I if I uh, get a violation. Is that how it works? I'd be shocked if I mean if you actually lost access to your Apple ID altogether. Do we want to talk about what happens when we violate Apple's agreements? Because that's one of the bullets on our list today. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll do a quick recap since, uh, I mean, I'm sure everyone knows what's been happening. But uh, if you haven't been following the news for the last two weeks, I'll give a recap. So, uh, Epic... Um, Epic updated Fortnite, which is a huge game, uh, and they updated it outside of the App Store update, so the update wasn't reviewed by Apple, as some games are prone to do. And they uh, put uh, an in-app payment method that just involved typing in credit card numbers. Was that it? I didn't actually see the, the screen. Was it just like presenting a credit card field to the custom, to the user? Yeah, it pulled up a basic payment processing web view. So you could buy in-app cur- in yeah in-game currency just by typing in the credit card details, which is a clear violation. Uh, you ha- you're supposed to use Apple's own in-app payment methods, of course. Right. Uh, so Apple did the obvious and just removed the app from the App Store. And there's nothing else that you would expect, really. Uh, but then Epic had all the lawsuits ready to go to uh, to. Uh, to fight Apple on this process. And then I thought, probably at that point, we're going to be left with a two-year legal battle at least. Uh, but then Apple 
Oh, actually, I should mention also that Fortnite released a, a video, a uh, ripoff of Apple's iconic 1984 video uh, of their own with Fortnite characters, I presume. I'm not a big Fortnite player. Right. And then uh, Apple kind of one up them by saying that on August 28, which is around ten uh, a week and a half from recording, that they're going to shut down Epic's developer accounts which uh, is what you kind of alluded to earlier. (laughs) Is Apple doing that part because people who still have Fortnite installed on their devices can still use this uh, breaching of policy in that payment method? Well, that's that was up to Apple. Apple has the ability to revoke their certificate, which would make every copy of Fortnite installed not work anymore. And that's not removing their account. That's just revoking a certificate. They did the same thing to Facebook, what, last year when they were harvesting user data? Yeah, that was funny. So uh, so this was deliberate on their part. I think they know that taking Fortnite off of a million plus devices would make people a lot more upset than just saying, hey, Epic, you're not allowed to update this, or you're not allowed to whatever, do anything until you've removed this violation from your app. Because just by removing it from the App Store, it's not the biggest punishment, really. I mean, it's fairly severe, but how much is Fortnite growing at the moment? Like everyone, nearly everyone who wants to play has got installed already. Yeah, Fortnite's declining in popularity right now. They're not still growing users at the moment, I don't think. At least not near the same rate they were. What if this whole thing was just a publicity stunt by Epic to uh, put the spotlight back on Fortnite for a little bit? I mean, I'm sure that's something they factored in. All publicity is good publicity, right? Right. So, where we are today, like, where where do you stand on this issue? What do you what do you think about it? Who do you think's in the right? Or <laughs> that's a tough question, right? I yeah, I have been thinking about it a lot since it all kicked off, and even before that, because you know the whole hey email app saga where right. they tried to um, you know, take payments outside the App Store, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and even kind of peripheral things like, was it Xbox streaming was pulled from? xCloud. Was xCloud was not allowed because of App Store policy. So App Store right. policy is like a hot topic which gets thought about a lot. So here's my opinion. All right. <laughs> uh Part one is that Apple's not taking a fair cut of money that people are paying to developers. Uh, 30% was probably fair back in the day when, you know, the the amount of money going into the App Store was a lot less. Um, It was a a totally new revenue stream for companies. Apple needed quite a bit of money to, mm-hmm. you know, to to put into the App Store. It was evolving, it was changing. Uh, but now that the App Store is like, I don't know how many billion dollars are going into the App Store, 30% of it is is not fair anymore. Okay. It, I mean, it's such a huge chunk of money. There's no way that it's spending 30% of all that on actually maintaining the App Store, the servers, the developers or anything about the App Store. There's no way 30% of all that money is going to the App Store. I bet a chunk of it is just going into the bank or going back to shareholders. So I have uh, a question about that point. Uh-huh. Uh, because the 30% number is an industry standard. That's what Google gets for in-app purchases. That's what Nintendo charges for Fortnite on Switch. That's what Sony charges for PlayStation or Fortnite on PlayStation. That's what Microsoft charges for net purchases done on Xbox. It's all 30% across the board, and they all require you do it through their payment methods. So, yeah, sorry. So I'm... I'm torn on this because Epic is is, is narrowing in on, on Google and Apple here, and mostly Apple, um, and, and they're... They don't have any complaints about paying that same fee on other platforms. Yeah. So they don't have the... 
Well, I reckon they do, but they're just not willing to, you know, to go after those other platforms. Well, Sony owns part of Fortnite or part of Epic. Oh, do they? Oh, that's news to me. Uh huh. So, I don't know. I I agree that's probably too high of a number, but it is an industry standard. So I don't think in and of itself it's enough to complain about, especially when Fortnite is not a game that's being sold for sixty dollars or something. It's 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 a free to play game, and so to process payments through their own payment method, they're basically asking to use Apple's infrastructure and distribution platform completely for free. Yeah, well, that's what I wanted to get to. Okay. If Apple's 30% was a lot smaller, then I think a lot more companies would be fine with the number and therefore the problem would probably disappear. Say it was just a 10%. I think 10% is like a fairly fair number for someone to pay to be on a platform like that and to you know, a small cut to mm-hmm. to take but 30 percent that's a huge amount of money that is a lot and some of these companies entire i mean not fortnite's but not epics some of their entire revenue stream comes from the app store and you immediately lose 30 percent of it is extreme like people complain about taxes this is like on the same level as taxes right it's an Apple tax, you could say. <laughs> I agree. The the thing about the lawsuit is and, and and I don't I don't agree that if Apple cut their percentage to fifteen or even ten percent that this would go away. Because their lawsuit doesn't say Apple's being unfair, it should be a lower cost. It says Apple's being unfair, we should be allowed to have our epic game store on the iPhone. And they want to do that because they just want to sell their games through their own store because because they want to do that to other people instead (laughs) i mean epic takes a 12 percent commission through stuff through the epic game store so it is a lower and more fair number but that's that's their end goal here that's the whole point of the lawsuit is they say that they want to be able to open up to other stores so i don't i don't agree that cutting the price is going to make this go away I think I still think it will. I mean, yeah, Epic's just one big company that's trying to make money against Apple, another big company. Mm-hmm. But the the lawsuit, uh, I don't know, kind of it represents a whole host of other complaints and things from other developers. Maybe not in reality, but in my mind, it represents all these other people who have tried to do similar things, mostly small companies, in the past. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the complaints would just... I, I think it is... Well, back to what I said, I think it's unfair at the moment. And I don't think Apple is going to come out of this uh, with the result they want, which is just for Epic to go back to what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Whereas if they were taking a much smaller cut, I think they would have a much stronger leg to stand on to say, look, we're just taking 10%, just a number I made up, mm-hmm. to maintain the app store to maintain the servers to maintain distribution everyone maintaining it and it literally costs us you know most of that 10 percent to actually do that whereas at the moment it's just like stuffing money into their pockets just because they created it well, and I, they decided 30 percent was a good amount back then based on i don't know what actually i mean i guess part of it comes down to the question of of who needs who because, yeah, you're paying for the upkeep, but you're also paying for the access to everyone who owns an iPhone, right? And and is is the iPhone selling more because Fortnite is on the App Store? Or is Fortnite selling more because it can be on the App Store? And if if the latter is true, then then maybe it does make sense that, hey, you pay a little bit to get access to those millions of users that you otherwise wouldn't. But I can see someone making the case, well, you know, and apps did make the iPhone in general. People buy iPhones because of the great apps. And so there's definitely some back and forth there, but I can see where Apple would say, like, you owe us because we're giving you access to this user base as well. Outside of maintenance. That if it was, if we're talking like eight, ten years ago, when phones with apps were pretty novel, well, with good apps, I mean, phones have had apps for a long before that, but they were usually pretty terrible. Right. So when it was novel, you know, you didn't really have to have a smartphone ten years ago. 
Although me and you, we did for sure, but <laughs> not everyone in the world. Right. Uh, so it was a novel thing, and to get part to get into that market and to put your Fortnite in front of all these people who are maybe slightly ahead of the curve, maybe ten years is a little bit uh, uh, not far enough back. Maybe maybe fifteen years. Actually, how old's the iPhone? Two thousand eight. Two thousand seven. 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 But. Nowadays, like, the phone has just become a utility, right? It's just ubiquitous. Everyone's got one. Yeah, I think for most people, if they had to have a smartphone or a computer, they would choose a smartphone because they can do their general purpose computing on that. Mm, Yeah, for sure. So I agree. And I think that a lot of, of just a general like platform rethinking for this decade needs to be done in terms of like things like X cloud streaming service app store needs all whole policy rewrite and I, whatever it takes, if they cut, you know, down to 10% on it in app purchases or allow people to do in app purchases through external providers, whatever, whatever solution needs to be arrived at that still maintains the app store as, as the only way to load apps on the iPhone. As long as that's the outcome then then I'm okay with it. But I really want the App Store to, to stay like the only way you can get on the platform. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. It needs to stay. But if Apple's like really nails down at 30% as the cut, I'm not sure if that will be the case. Right. Whereas there's a much smaller cut and there's much less argument from these other companies to um, to actually circumvent the App Store somehow. Right. I mean, as soon as, man, as soon as someone says Apple has to allow side loading or other app stores, I mean, I can just picture Facebook distributing their app through another app store that doesn't have the same privacy restrictions or requirements the app store does. And suddenly there's no threat of our certificate being revoked. So we're putting all of the user tracking stuff back in. And if you want to use Facebook, yeah. you have to get it through this store, you know? Suddenly, everything, every time you use Facebook, it's like it connects to VPN and then all your traffic goes through Facebook. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a world we do not want to live in. That sounds super sketchy. Right. Yeah, I use the iPhone specifically for the curated experience. That's that's one of the main reasons that I use the iPhone and I love it and trust it for all my kids. And they all have iPod touches and, and there's iPads they play on. And, and And to lose that is to lose one of the main marketing points of the iOS ecosystem, in my opinion. Right. So for Apple to maintain that, what do you think they have to do? How do you think they win this little battle? I think that, because like I said earlier, I don't think cutting that number down is going to actually settle this. I think that they're going to have to allow payments to be done through other external processors. So you would still get the app from the app store, but as soon as you wanted to subscribe to it, it would, I don't know, pop up a, a credit card form. Well, it's like it's like using the Amazon app, right? Because because those payments don't go through Apple. You buy your item on the app, and it it goes straight through Amazon because you're buying a physical good, and that's an exception to their policy. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's that same idea, that same functionality that they've already allowed, and already we can already see that it works. And I'd be fine with that being allowed for digital goods as well. It's definitely a worse experience, though. Imagine every time you download an app, you also have to go through a, a payment form, type in a fiddly credit card number, and I've got set that up. This is my thought. So, just like starting now or just in the recent past, if you have sign in with social sign on, you have to have sign in with Apple. I think if they had a rule that if you're doing payment through a third party payment, you have to support. Uh, Apple Pay. And you can just click the Apple Pay button, and it brings up the pay sheet, and it'll be it'll still be a smooth experience. It just won't be going through the App Store. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. And Apple will actually still gets a cut on that because they get like a micro percentage on Apple Pay transactions as well. Right, that'd be coming from the credit card providers instead. So, yeah. So, but uh, that's that's my ideal outcome from this. So, and what's your point against just reducing the cut so that? The arguments go away. You don't think the I just will go away? Yeah, I just don't think that's good enough. I think that Epic's going to keep fighting it, and that I—I I mean, I think they want their own store on iOS. I mean, they said that they laid that out in the lawsuit, and I think but that they want that because of being able to just sell their apps 
through their service. Well, I mean, the Epic Store is is just like a, like Steam, right? Other developers put their apps on there, and then Epic gets a cut from them. And I think they want to be able to distribute apps on iOS and make money from that the same way Apple does. Um, and they want to bypass the 30% by doing that as well. Right. So that's what they want. And I think it's going to take allowing third-party payments for them to back off or for their for their case to, to I don't know, fall apart. So if they were allowed to do third-party payments, they would give up on the idea of having an app store and what they would just release all of their the apps that would have been in the app store individually on the Apple app store. And, and just like each one you launched, you would pay for it once you downloaded the app. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Like I said, I don't think their case is completely coherent for that reason. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's that's the minimum it's going to take for them to to back off. Now, what it's going to take for for a court to say, you know, who's right or wrong, I don't know. Maybe Apple says we'll cut it down to fifteen percent. Apple says, and the court says, okay, that's fair now, and that's the end of it. You know. Yeah, things would pretty much stay as they are then if that were to happen. Hmm. I think this will take a long time to resolve, although there might be some more back and forwards, you know, with Apple's whole, we're going to cancel your developer accounts in a week and a half. They get, Well, yeah, they gave them a fortnight to update Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, I wonder if it was accidental. I think that's like part of their policy as yeah, they get, they, if a developer is like in direct violation, they have two weeks to fix it or their account gets deactivated or something. Mm, okay. Um, but but people have pointed out that revoking out Epic's developer certificate affects a lot more than Fortnite. We're talking about them not being able to sign versions of the Unreal Engine for game developers to use anymore. Ooh, on Macs as well? Well, specific... So, yeah, it's specifically for... Because the Unreal Engine is a, a game development tool uh, mm-hmm. that they would no longer be able to sign, so if developers wanted to keep using it and if Epic wanted to keep updating it, they'd have to distribute it unsigned and you'd have to bypass Gatekeeper to install and use it. Oh, wow. Which I've I, people have been kind of, I think, blowing this a little overboard that specifically because developers working with the Unreal Engine are the kind of people that would not have any issue bypassing Gatekeeper to keep using a tool. Mm-hmm. That's not an issue for them. Mm-hmm. Um but but people are saying, oh, this is like Apple targeting developers and and ruining everyone. But uh, yeah, I don't see it that way. Yeah, that's what Fortnite tried to say. Did Epic tried to say with the 1984 uh, knockoff ad, <laughs> right? So, and funnily, they did not have any kind of comeback for when Google kicked them off the Play Store. No, no, they're not quite as focused on that battle. I think. And it is a slightly different argument as well because you can sideload apps on uh, Android outside of the Play Store. Yeah, but they're suing Google as well and saying that that Google's actively makes it hard to sideload apps, and so that's not fair either. That's right. Yeah. So, I, different battle. yeah, I I don't know. I don't think that their case is as strong as they're trying to make it to be, but I definitely think things need to change just for the future of the App Store as a whole. Uh, so five days ago, uh, Bloomberg posted that Apple is reading an Apple One subscription bundle to boost services. Uh, the the takeaway posted by Throw Me Away seventeen eighty four this new bundle is geared towards families and they'll work with Apple's family sharing system. Uh, offers are designed to save consumers about two dollars to upwards of five dollars a month, <laughs> depending on the package. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about bundling all the different subscriptions Apple offers. Uh, to name a few, you've got iCloud Storage, Apple Music, News Plus, TV Plus. What have I missed? Um, is that it? I think I missed one. Music, News Plus, TV Plus, Storage, Arcade. Sorry, Arcade. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think it's going to work? I think it's going to take more than two to five dollars. <laughs> Took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> because I mean, Apple Music is a service that I'll keep paying for forever, and uh, just because I have kids, 
arcade is a service I'm going to continue paying for, but I myself have not found much value in arcade. I found, you know, maybe two games I think are fun and then it's not worth $5 a month. Um, News Plus, not interested in. TV Plus, I've watched everything they have that I'm interested in. So, so I'm bundling a bunch of services that I have, I don't know, lukewarm appreciation of at best. And that's going to require a big discount for me to keep any of those services around. I think that'll be the problem for most people. Like if you were to say all five services are bundled, most people would say, well, I don't use two or three out of the five. So even if you are giving me a discount off the five, it's going to be more than I was paying already. Right. So how would you get around that? I mean, you might have to say like, um, if you choose two, then you get like 5% off. If you choose three, you get 10% off. If you right. choose four, you get 15% off, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it doesn't really sound like something Apple would do because it's just a bit messy to, to offer something like that. Right. Man, I don't know. It'd have to be something like $25 a month at most for, for me to be interested Oh, for me to be interested, it would have to be what I'm paying now and then not a dollar more and I get everything because I'm already paying for what I want. So why would I pay any more for other stuff which I don't really want? And the only thing I'm actually on the fence about is Apple Arcade because I do love a couple of the games, right. not many of them. Not enough to pay for it. Right. Uh, the kids aren't of the age of playing games yet. And really, I'm just not paying for it so that I don't spend my life playing mini motorways. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would appreciate having a once a month payment for all the services I'm using instead of a few dollars being taken in my bank account every couple of days. Mm, mm-hmm. um, yeah, a lot of people have said that in the comments as well. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what what I actually am paying is what's Apple music $10 a month. Well, actually Apple music is free for me because it's through my carrier. So I wonder what that would look like. Do you pay your carrier though? Or it's just free free. It's just part of my phone plan. I get free Apple music and like a couple other things like Disney plus. Um, so Apple music's not a factor. Uh, I pay $5 a month for arcade. I have the two terabyte iCloud plan, which is like $15 a month. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's 15 Australian, so it's probably less for you. Maybe 10. And I have TV Plus for free right now, which I don't think that I'd pay for once I have to pay for it because there's nothing on there I'm interested in watching right now. So I'm actually not paying very much right now, like maybe $20 a month. So there's no way you would actually go for a bundle. Because... Yeah. If they, well, like if they said it was $5 more and I got News Plus and I could get TV Plus and like all that, I'd say, okay, that's fair. I might read a magazine every once in a while, make that worthwhile. But I'm, yeah, I couldn't pay more, much more than that. I'm paying for your two TVs, iCloud and the Apple Music family. TV Plus I've got for free, but even though I pay for it, I just torrent the shows anyway because it's easier and the TV apps all suck. <laughs> That's it for me. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what we get and when we get it because, of course, there have been rumors of bundles for... Uh, for donkey's years already right and, uh, and as c Lars says in the comments uh, they can't wait for it to be only in the us <laughs> tends to be how things happen right to start with at least available in the us and then two years later available in australia and great britain is news plus available in australia i think it is okay but you still don't have apple pay stuff like apple pay cash there's no apple pay cash but the rest of apple pays here can you get the Apple Card in Australia? No, you can't get the Apple Card. Hmm. Yeah, News Plus is here for sure. One month free, then a mere fourteen ninety nine per month. No, oh you. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't understand. I, I guess I do understand that that many magazines is is a lot of money if you actually read all of them. But considering I don't read any of them, like it being one of their more expensive services, makes no sense to me. There must be a market of people that do like it and use it, though. It's just not us. It's someone else. Maybe. Hmm. So, but they're going to need to do something. I think they're going to need something with that with TV Plus, as well. And hopefully, they have some kind of plan in the pipeline for when everyone's free year is up in a month or two. Because 
I don't know how they're going to convince people to keep paying for it unless this bundle is their yeah, plan. So September's already upon us, basically. Yeah. It's late August now, mid to late. Uh, the other thing that's kind of rumored alongside all this is Apple Fitness. Oh, right. An interesting rumor that's also been around for a little while. Yeah, we kind of thought we'd hear something about that at WWDC. Yeah, maybe it's uh, saved for the iPhone event next month. So this would be some sort of service or app or something on, on your TV, maybe. Certainly on the watch, it makes sense to have it there. Right. Is this something that interests you at all? Mm, depends what form it takes. Is it going to be, I mean, if it's just like aerobics videos, right? <laughs> like you imagine from 1980s and 1990s infomercials, then <laughs> this certainly doesn't interest me. Actually, I don't even know what it would take to interest me. Well, there's definitely a like an emerging market in this category. Peloton is a big name right now because they're doing, I don't know if they're live or pre-recorded like group workout sessions um, and that's a subscription service associated with that. And I think they also sell equipment to use at home along with the trainers. But, but to imagine a service like that, that also like is synced with your Apple watch. And so your Apple watch is like monitoring you and making sure you're whatever it can keep track of making sure you're working out correctly on the right forms. And then is keeping track of your heart rate and health information while you're doing the workout. It could be a cool integration for people that are, that are really interested in that kind of fitness stuff. It's a very interesting concept. Is it kind of socializing your fitness in some way so it doesn't always feel like you're working out alone? Right. If if that was the case, then this year's an opportune time to do it. Right, yeah. As a lot of the world is stuck at home doing their fitness. But if we were in normal times, then I'd probably rather just look for, you know, a running group on Meetup or something like that or on Facebook and do it that Oops as I knee my microphone, I do it that way in, uh, instead of having some sort of virtual group that I did it with. Right. Also having never used any of these things. I, uh, I don't know. Maybe there's some draw card that I'm missing. I mean, there's, there's certainly people that aren't near metro areas where they could find groups to work out with, or even people who, uh, are just more generally shy that would rather do a video version than than being in person or or something like that but i don't know how big that market actually is i'm sure it's fairly sizable yeah hmm. could be something to throw in anything to add up the value of this this uh plan here yeah it also seems like what? if this if this rumor is completely true and apple one is the name of this bundle it sounds like they're maybe trying to make a brand around this one naming as well considering we have apple music one now uh yeah that was an interesting comment from someone on the post actually oh really yeah, if they've um so apple music one and then the rumored service name is apple one they're, they're two almost too similar so either one of them's wrong well yeah <laughs> apple music one's not wrong because apple announced that themselves but either apple one is wrong or there's some tie-in between the two but also Apple isn't that concerned about confusing naming considering we've got an Apple TV and TV Plus and TV app and <laughs> right whatever else. Hmm. Also, Apple One is, a, is already a product, right? That was their first computer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I think after 50 years, you can kind of reuse a name. <laughs> okay. If you say, it hasn't been 50 years yet. Apple One was 76. They've got a few years. Oh, we're not far off 50 years. <laughs> they got six years. 44 years ago. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe One is going to be the new... I mean, Apple Music One... Radio isn't really a service, but maybe it's going to be some new service branding kind of thing. Mm. The service will be called Infinite One. Apple Infinite One. Infinite One. Just a take on the address. <laughs> one infinite loop. 
right? <laughs> What's their new address? Like Apple Park Way or something? Yeah, something like that. Apple Parkway. <laughs> Parkway Drive. Classic Australian band. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, located at 1 Apple Parkway. Yep. Uh, so here's a topic I just threw in there. Didn't have too many upvotes, but I also just wanted to talk about the topic in general. Uh, so the topic is that a new Mac work malware infects and spreads via Xcode projects. Uh, the whole topic of Apple malware has kind of been on my mind recently because uh, my work has been uh, like going through a process of renewing antivirus and just figuring out in general what what we're doing with antiviruses on computers considering uh, like Windows 10 has got Windows Defender, which is performs seemingly as well as most third-party antiviruses now. Right. And also have lots of Macs in the company. Uh, and my, my co-worker is of the mind that Macs should have an antivirus. And I'm saying, well, usually they cause more problems than they solve, so there's no need for that. Argument goes back and forth. Uh, and then this pops up. <laughs> so just wondering what your thoughts are on the whole uh, antivirus on a Mac. I, I agree with your position across all platforms. I think antivirus software causes more problems than it solves. I, I think I'm probably speaking from a position of someone who knows what they're doing well enough that it, that's the case. I'm sure there's people, especially maybe the older generation, that downloads things more willy-nilly and an antivirus might serve them a lot better. Um, but Including on a Mac, would you say? Uh you know, I, I don't think I would. I don't think that you need antivirus on a Mac. Especially now with with Gatekeeper really locking things down and taking a couple steps if you want to bypass Gatekeeper. I think that for the most part, general users are, are pretty safe on a Mac as well. In the case of this article that was posted though, mm -hmm. the virus is actually injecting itself into Xcode projects so that developers are actually building their apps with the virus in it. Right. Yeah, this is a very clever by bypass to download the virus and then and then build it on the computer itself. So the virus is actually signed by the developer. Right. <laughs> and then distributed. Um, and it's not a... Uh, it's a fairly serious virus too. It, um, what does it say? It, uh, it basically allows remote access to whichever computer is infected mm -hmm. it, it did seem like the scope of this is is really small though i think they said they only found it in, in two xcode projects and and only had like a couple hundred victims they, they'd they been able to f trace uh so hopefully i actually not completely sure how this would be done but hopefully apple can can patch this out pretty quickly and, and it won't ever spread to the scope of being a big issue. The two GitHub projects are actually linked in the Reddit post. Oh, they're linked in the Reddit post? Yeah, you can find them, yep. Oh. Uh, and both have had the uh, had the, the virus raised as issues. Neither has a response from the developer yet. Let's um, see. Only talking about like a day old with these comments. <laughs> Issue: Your project is infected. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's awesome. And the commenter says, "Must be nice to have the guts to literally put malware onto GitHub." That sounds like the developer did it knowingly, but I don't know. Yeah, there was no indication in the article. I didn't read through the Reddit comments much, but on whether or not. Like the the authors of these two specific projects were the ones that created this malware, or if they were just mm. using some third party code that also contained it. Right. But that was my assumption. I didn't think that these people were the authors of this. And the two projects linked don't seem to be related. I mean, one's in Mandarin by the look of it, and the other's in English. Take this off GitHub. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that commenter was a little bit aggressive about it. That's funny. It's not like these are popular projects that anyone else is using. <laughs> They're not hurting anyone. Yeah. Huh. Are these both Objective C projects? No, one's an Objective C and one's a Swift project. Interesting. 
but I don't think it's going to have, have much of an effect on anyone day to day. So yeah, in all my years of doing IT work for you know whoever was willing to to pay me to do it, I don't think I ever came across a virus on a Mac. The worst that you would find on a Mac would be some sort of advertising infection where like Safari somehow had uh, been hijacked and the, the home page would always default to you know search dot ru or something like that, <laughs> right? And then you might get pop-ups which some people well usually the users would call it a virus but technically it's not really a virus it's just like a browser hijack um, but even those seem to be fairly well blocked by is it gatekeeper no uh, x protect uh, these days yeah I, I mean viruses do and have existed for the mac but there's so few and far between that It'd be it's hard to get one. Like even if you deliberately went out and and clicked on suspicious links, it'd be hard to get one. Mac Keeper is probably one of the worst viruses that you could actually get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to combat those apps which are so close to being. Well, I guess they are legitimate programs. They're just scammy, right? <laughs> so I mean, I've I've used a Mac for the better part of my life and including spanning back to the years where I was much less careful about where I was going on the internet and what I was downloading and and I've never once had anything I'd call a virus on a Mac. But if you're using Windows, do you think that would also be the case or do you think you would have been done? Oh, I have gotten viruses on Windows. So <laughs> Yeah, definitely the case. Uh do we have any more topics or is that it? I think that's it. That was the last one. Well, I'm James VDM on Reddit and on Twitter. And I'm Jelly Woot on Reddit and Twitter. And the topic will be posted on our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash the r apple show. All right. Well, I wanted to complain to you about something that's completely unrelated. I just wanted to complain some more today, I okay. guess. Yeah. Um, I'm... I'm struggling with my uh internet provider right now oh no when i when i moved uh back at the end of march beginning of april right when uh covid19 was really picking up uh the the address i was going to move to the people that were currently living there um were a military family and the military put like a block on moving due to the virus, like right before I was going to move. Okay. And, and so I ended up moving into um, like a house across the street that the landlord also owned and was able to rent to me. Uh, but at, at the point that I had to, to switch where I was moving, I already had all my services and utilities set up to start at the new place. Uh. And so I had to, had to call all of the, utility companies and and get my address updated to the new location and right. and one of those was the internet provider and instead of changing the address on my account my internet provider set me up a second account at the new address okay yeah and pretty common sure yeah and they and they sent me a second modem and a router and just a bunch of equipment right. yeah why it's a- do all telcos do that? <laughs> ISPs are so happy to post out routers. I swear right. to God, sometimes well, here's you end up with like four routers. Well, here's exactly why. There's, well, I don't know about you, but in my case, there's an $80 equipment fee associated with that. Oh. And so, and and this was all done before I even moved in the first place. So I moved and got two, two modems and one router because the first account I set up, I said I didn't want a router. And the second account I didn't set up. Someone just set it up and sent it to me. Mm, so, right. So anyway, I, uh, I went into my local office and, and uh, said, you know, I got sent two stuff. I don't know what's going on. And they looked and said, oh, you have two accounts in your name for some reason. We'll just take this equipment you don't need back. And, and that'll be the end of it. Sure. <laughs> well, I, uh. I checked online like either that day or later that week and I saw that this this other account I had at the address I never lived at had the $80 equipment fee on it as well as the fee I was already paying at the correct address 
And so I called and said, hey, you, I'm not going to pay this twice. You set up two accounts instead of just changing the address on my existing account. And I didn't request this equipment. And I was told that, yeah, we'll remove the charge. It won't be an issue. And I checked checked this account a couple weeks later, and the charge was still there. So I called him back again. And I said, hey, this charge is still here. And the person looked up and said, oh, I see there's a flag on here that says that it's like whatever, an old charge that's going to be removed. Don't worry about it. It's not an issue. And uh, that was the end of it until I woke up a couple days ago and had received an email saying that I have uh, like a derogatory mark on my credit account because one of, oh. one of my bills went to a collections agency. Are you kidding? So... I was pretty frustrated and I called I called the support line and and said I need to talk to like a manager or supervisor whoever is is high enough up that they can get a charge retracted from a collections agency and uh and and I was told that oh, there's no one available that can do that I'll put a ticket in and you'll get a call back between 2 and 48 hours <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. So of course, in the time span of the next two days, I get a call back. It just happens to be in the ten minutes I'm in the shower, of course. and I and I miss the call. And so I call back immediately, like less than five minutes. I call back, and and the the manager that had had called me left his his name and gave me a phone number, and the number was just their general support line. And so when I called uh-huh. back and said, "Hey, this person called." The person that answered the phone had no idea who that manager was. No. Looked at my account and Probably in a different country. Right. Looked at my account and there was no note about like, hey, forward this person is just it just said attempt made, right? There was no information about it. And they said, Well, let me let me see if I can find someone who can help you with the problem. And and they went around and and they put me on hold. And I have to assume I, I sat on hold for like fifteen minutes and someone else picked up the phone who was, I assume, just another person that worked there and saw a call had been holding hold for a long time because they had no idea who I was or what was going on, and they weren't able to help me either. So they said, let me find you a manager. And and they were able to get me someone who who said they were a manager or higher up or whatever. And, and they got all my information, and it didn't sound like things were going well because... Because she's like, yeah, let me look into this, and I'll be happy to explain to you why you had an overlap in your fees, and I'll explain why this charge is legitimate to you. It's like I don't. I did an explanation, right? Right. right. <laughs> they said, well, let me look into a couple more things on your account. Just a minute, and they put me on hold, and I was on hold for another 10, 15 minutes, and then got hung up on. Ah, oh, that is the most infuriating thing that can happen. Right, oh. <laughs> and that that's where things have been left off right now. Oh my god! Because that's just such classic ISP behavior as well. I know. And at this point, like, I'll pay you eighty dollars. Just get the mark off my credit because that's gonna stay on there for seven years. Over eighty dollars. Yeah, don't need that there. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. And how eager were they to put that, send that to the debt collector? Mm-hmm. Like, how long? How far was the amount outstanding for? According to them. Well, it would have been since the beginning of April. Okay. Yeah, a few months. Yeah. So. Uh, so I know, now I've got a call yeah. back, and I'll probably get another ticket put in. And I'll receive another call in 2 to 48 hours. And and it'll be at like 3 a.m. or something. <laughs> Ridiculous. Right. And I'm just anticipating that at one point, like once I finally talk to someone, they're going to be like, no, this was legitimate, or... Or sorry, there's nothing we can do about it, and it, and I don't, I don't actually anticipate that anyone's gonna ever actually help me here. So no, no, they just, they just want their money. Then they don't care. Yeah, well, it's not even their money anymore. They sold the debt off to someone else, right? Oh, that's right. So I just need them to Are actually being pestered by them as well. Constantly. Oh, fucking hell. Over eighty dollars, <laughs> and so eighty dollars. Yeah. So so yeah, I actually need someone there with the authority to like send a message and tell this collection agency we sent me you we sent you an illegitimate debt and you need to remove it so mm. it's gonna well, be you just don't want even though it's a small amount of money you don't even want to pay on principle right exactly 
do is there a third party that you can go to 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 mediate this oh yeah there's plenty of law firms that would be happy to help but they're talking about paying hundreds of dollars to them over an 80 dollars oh, charge no, i mean like a like some sort of government agency no there's nothing like that you should move to australia we can just go straight to the government and be like this telco is ripping me off man and be like put the hammer down on the telco yeah that'd be great no we just have other companies who are happy to take my money and and for mm-hmm. people who have you know maybe thousands of dollars of outstanding debt that's the way to go but when it's 80 dollars, i'm not going to pay between three and six hundred dollars for this for them to get it removed for me you know no exactly maybe that's what they're banking on as well yeah so, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I mean, it's not the end of the world. An an eighty dollar, you know, derogatory charge doesn't do much to your credit. It's it's not a lot of money, but yet, like you said, it's just it's a principle. I'm gonna keep calling until someone fixes it. Mm, yeah. But you can't even do the whole. I'm gonna stay on the phone until this is fixed because they'll probably just put you on hold and then to the sly hang up oops i bumped through the uh got the cradle or something right yeah which is i assume <laughs> i assume is what happened last time i don't know it happens all too often for these all to be mistakes right that's what i'm saying it was a, a sarcastic mistake oh okay. it's like i didn't want to deal yeah. with this oops the system hung up on you yeah <laughs> i mean because here's the deal is like that manager that they call me back they call me at like like five five thirty, five thirty in at, at in the evening, which I specifically waited. Like, I didn't take a shower until five thirty because I assumed if I was going to get called today, it would be before five, and then not after business hours. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm sure it was someone Maybe like business hours in a different time zone, right? So I bet it was someone at the end of their day, right? It's like I, this is going to be a headache. I don't want to deal with this. Are you dealing with uh, Americans or foreigners? for this company i mean as far as i can tell by accents they seem to be american Mm. um at least now now i don't know if i'm calling a different number or not i know the the support number i called months ago um when i was originally asking about the charge it did seem to be going to like an indian call center or something Mm -hmm. so i don't know if i found a different number or if things have changed but yeah so hopefully I'll have an update in two weeks, but I, I think the update's yeah. going to be that, <laughs> that nothing changed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cross my fingers for you. All right. I appreciate it. We can start a hashtag on Twitter. All, all like 10 of our Twitter followers. What's it going to be? David's bill matters. <laughs> no, I, w- I was trying to think of a, some kind of play on, uh, on Epic's, Hashtag free Fortnite, but I don't know how to how to tie that in. Uh, what could it be? If I didn't come up with anything funny, <laughs> no, I'll think on it. I'll let you know what I come up with. All right. Well, maybe one of our Twitter followers will. I'll leave it up to them. They can come up with one. There's a remote possibility. Maybe one of the three people who have made it this far in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Two people. Me and you. 